Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Ink It Up tutorial, we're going to use the Berry Blessing stamp set and the Berry Delightful Designer Series paper to create this simple card. Then I'll also show you how to embellish it and do some extras to it. So here's, here's a card I'm making. I just thought it'd be fun to make a card to feature free products that you can earn during celebration. So I'm going to open up this whole pack of Designer Series paper, show you the whole thing, show you what I came up with for this card, and what I'm working on. And then I just thought it'd be fun to show you the card I'm working on and how to make it. So what is Celebration? It is something that goes on, well, it usually goes on once a year, but this time we're going to have it twice this year. But each Celebration is going to be different. At Stampin' Up! Our company, so from January 5th to, January, to February 28th, you can earn items for free. The way you earn items for free is to shop at my store, which is linked in the description of this video. And when you shop, you can earn a variety of products. For example, some you can earn when you spend $50. And I've done an entire celebration walkthrough where I showed examples of things made with almost everything in this book. But now I'd like to feature something that you can earn for free when you spend $100. And that is a double, a double fun thing. So it's the Berry Blessing stamp set and it's the very delightful designer series paper. Right now, this is the only way to get this designer series paper is to earn it. I hope that in the future we can just get the refills of just the paper because I have the stamp set already and I would love to just get more of this paper. Hi Lorna, thank you for joining me. But for now, that's the only way to get this set. So I just thought it'd be fun to make a simple card with this and then I'm gonna show you some other cards I made with this combination as well. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to show you the designer series paper full, fully, but then I've already cut what I need for the cards. There are so many coordinating colors in this designer series paper. It's pretty amazing in that because there are so many coordinating colors, you can do so much with it because you can use so many inks, so many of our card stocks, like card stocks. I, I found sequins that match. That's how I jazzed up my card. And then I thought of other ways. After I had already started planning this video, I thought of other ways to jazz up cards created with this paper. So, the, I like to go over the coordinating colors when I show you something. And I'm not even going to put this in the camera. There's so many coordinating colors. I, I have reading glasses, so I need to put this up near near me to, show, to talk about the coordinating colors. So it's Balmy Blue, Blackberry Bliss, Calypso Coral, Cherry Cobbler, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Garden Green, Granny Apple Green, Knight of Navy, Pacific Point, Poppy Parade, Rich Razzleberry, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White. So those will come into play later when I show you different colors I picked for this project. You'll see why I picked those colors because they were coordinating colors. So you get a pack of 12 by 12 sheets, double-sided patterns when you get this paper. In our mini catalog, this mini catalog here. There is a sweet strawberry bundle and it coordinates with this in that it, it punches out these strawberries from this paper. And it just coordinates with it really well. I love the picnic look and how this is going to be fun for summer. I especially love this blueberry paper. It has a nice watercolor look to it. And even if you're not into berries, you can do something with the other side of this paper. Like I thought it'd be fun to use the strawberry builder punch, to, the strawberry punch, I mean, for the, in the mini catalog to punch out this paper here because it's already, I don't know if you can see that, but it's already shaped like strawberry seeds. Makes me, this paper wants me, to, makes me want to sing strawberry fields forever. And the last sheet. And this is just a nice jungle pattern. Okay, so later when you look at my projects, you're going to see the paper I started with to create this. So this is what we're creating. So ahead of time, I've already cut the pieces for you. And I'm going to be decorating these cards with sequins. I didn't do it yet because sometimes, depending on how I mail things, I, I, I might put sequins or pearls, different types of things on these to jazz them up. But I did put adhesive back sequins on this one. So I've already cut all the paper. 
I punched all these. They're, they're mostly the same, but you can see sometimes I put, oops, that was upside down. I tried to put the, the blueberries on top. Okay, so you can get you can get a couple sheets of design space paper and create like a whole lot of cards of the same thing. So here is what you need to know. And I'm gonna write it on this paper here, on this mat, these because hi Sheila, because I don't want I don't want to sit and cut, you know, make you wait for me to cut everything. So I'm just gonna write it down right on here. So for the card, the card base is a typical card base. You take and, and there's nothing inside this card. It's a very simple card. So you're going to take an 8.5 by 11 sheet. And you're going to make it 4 and a quarter. In other words, you're going to cut that times 5.5. And, and that's that's your card. This, so that's your card. 4 and a quarter by 5.5. Because that's half and half, right? You're folding, you're cutting the card. And then, of course, you score it. So it's really, let's see, you're going to have to do, yeah, eight. You're going to have to do eight and a half, and then you're going to have to score it. So you, it doesn't matter which way you open the card, but that's your card. So then you're going to have your basic white. And I didn't, I didn't, I'm going to be putting this in the description of the video. This is just me giving you some notes. And that basic white and this mat, this mat behind here is going to be four and a quarter by five. I'm sorry, four. It's going to be, sorry, it's going to be four by five and a quarter. And I'll have all this in the description. So that's what this is. It's a typical card base, four by five and a quarter. So that's, let's start with that. And that's what we're going to stamp first with the granny apple green. And then we'll get into these little pieces that we'll adhere. So we need, I've already cut these. I've already cut a bunch of these. So you cut them in basic white, whisper white. Okay. Four by five and a quarter. And you're going to use, when you stamp onto them, you, it's good to use a silicone mat when you stamp. In fact, here, let's just write this here. Four by five and a quarter because you're not going to see what I wrote on before. Now I'm going to take my stamping block. We'll take the stamping block D. And you, this is this is a really fun stamp set in that it's it's a two-step stamping set. But I'm not using the two-step part. You can color in the inside with another color. That's what two-step stamping means. You can cut, you can stamp the outline in one color, and then stamp the inside in another color. And I did that for some other cards, but not for the card I'm doing right now. For the card I'm doing right now, I'm keeping it simple. So we're gonna put that leaf on here like this onto the stamping block D. It's a photopolymer stamp set. That's what makes it nice when you do the two-step stamping is because you can see through it. We're going to open up the granny apple green. Flip that open and lay that right here. We're going to tap, tap, tap the leaf and the first time you stamp, stamp onto your paper first. Just onto your mat because it's just to make sure that you have a good coverage before you mess up your paper. Okay, so Granny Apple Green is one of the coordinating colors you might recall. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to go for this effect. I'm just trying to go for some leaves sticking out into the middle section. So do something like that. Every card is going to be different. And if you want them to be lighter, then you stamp off first. You can stamp off the paper and stamp onto this. If you want them to be lighter, if you don't mind them being dark, just you, just you, give it your first stamp. Just put your first stamp right on there. Okay. If you are going to do two-step stamping, you know you would take this other stamp and you would stamp inside with that pattern here, which is really nice. And that's what's great about having photopolymer stamps, where you can see through. All right. So that's all we need for the granny apple green. Actually, let's do, we'll just do two of those while we're at it. Because if we mess up the card, I like to always have two done. You know, in case we mess it up. Oh, more people came. Hi, Yvonne. Nice to see you. I'm glad you get notified. I'm glad some of you sign up for notifications for when I go live. Because if you don't, cl if you don't click that bell to be notified, then you're not notified. 
and then you have to wait for my video to publish and sometimes it takes I think the ones from a few days ago are still uploading from my phone they actually take like days to get off of my phone in high high definition video but if you go live you can see it right away otherwise it takes like days for it to kind of upload and for me to make my blog post and everything to, to get the to get them off my phone okay so does that stamp cut out with the scan and cut I never tried it of course it would cut out with the scan and cut you would just have to use the pencil trick I don't think I'm going to use this one for the scan and cut it's just not that kind of thing it's not really a fun it's more of an artistic type stamp set I don't think I would use this with the scan and cut you, you can but you're gonna have to enclose with a pencil a pencil here 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 and then when you do two-step stamping you wouldn't need the pencil trick because this would enclose those lines but this is more of an artistic stamp set, so I don't feel like you need to cut these out. Look, they're not really fully, they're not fully defined lines. I don't know. Just, it's just not the kind of set I would use that for. I, I just choose my cutesy sets. You know what I mean? I choose my darting donkeys and my sets that have good, well-defined lines. I don't want to fight with it. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Barbara. Hey, watching on the big screen TV? And I don't know how you're able to make a comment, because my friend Mary says she always watches me on her TV. And she's not able to make a comment from her TV, so you must have figured out the magic, magic sauce. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put these pieces of designer series paper onto the card using the seal plus adhesive. So that's it. So we're going to take, and these these pieces are, like I said, I have to, I have to put the notes in the description of the video. But that was the piece of basic white and it was really whisper white but I mean basic white is what we sell now we, we ran out of whisper white we, we don't sell whisper white anymore so these are going to be uh, DSP strips so the DSP you're going to get two of these and they're going to be five, three and three and three fourths inch by and we'll put inches there inches inches by one and three fourths inch. And I've already cut these ahead of time just so I wouldn't have to bring as much stuff into the video camera. I just did it ahead of time. Now when you have paper on paper, you can use seal, regular seal. It's cheaper, I mean, it actually is cheaper, meaning it's cheaper and it's also not as strong. That's why it's cheaper. So I like to, so you can use seal when you're doing paper on paper. It gets a little stuck, it's, it's a lot, I'd say it's a lot harder to use than seal plus because seal plus just comes, comes out with little, little ridges, but Seal Plus is better for boxes, but I also just prefer it. So I think for this tutorial, I'm gonna use Seal Plus because Seal Plus has little ridges on it and it's just so much easier to come off. That It's just so much easier to roll. Oh, well that was nice, Barbara. Okay, so you can't comment on your TV, she was right. So you commented on your, so hi MJ, Kathy. So put the little strawberries down here. It doesn't matter what you do with the panels. I just, I'm using, I'm using this white panel to sort of frame the whole thing. And I do that a lot in my designs, but you could use other colors of paper that coordinate. So we'll put some berries up there. Actually it gets it. That berry looks like it has a big fingerprint on it. I don't know if that's my fingerprint or it's part of the, the paper. So we'll do this one. Okay. So as I was putting the adhesive on here, I came up with something to jazz up. So I'm going to try to jazz up this card. So I th saw this pattern and I thought of something to do with that pattern. So we'll do something else to jazz up one of the cards besides adhesive back sequins. Now I don't think it really matters, but the berries, like the upside down, I'm trying to make it like this. Hi Leanne, like the berries, that little berry part facing down. But I mean, I don't think the powder, I don't think the paper matters except for the strawberries matter that you want those to face down. Hi Silky. I don't know how you, if you say your name Silky from Germany and hi Nikki from New Jersey. Silky, Silky, I like that name, especially for crafters, right? It's a good name for crafter. Put some more strawberries on this paper. So two strips of adhesive. Seal Plus works a lot better because it has little ridges and you can get it off better. Regular seal is okay for paper though, and it just I just simply have to fight with it more. I like to keep it real. I'll try it again. We'll give it another chance. We will give it a chance to redeem itself. Here we go, I'm picking a piece of, I like the paper, the more berries, the better. Right, so any any paper is gonna be good on this. 
Is this just you? I just want to use a couple different patterns. All right, so now we're going to adhere this to our card base. Our card bases are Knight of Navy, and I just wanted to show you that you can do this. With an 8.5 by 11 sheet, you can get two cards out of an 8.5 by 11 sheet. And these can, these can open this, you can open them this way, or you can open the cards this way. It doesn't really matter what you do, but how you open your cards. It's up to you. I just have a, I just have half going one way. I literally made half going one way and half going the other way, just to change it up. And every card you make is going to actually be slightly different from each other. So you're putting that on there like that. So I just thought it's Sunday, it's celebration, you know, make something simple, make something fun. I thought the very, very blessings was perfect for this. The very blessings, this one, the very blessings. And you can, of course, you can stamp the inside and put all kinds of leaves and, ber leaves and berries on the inside as well. All right, so then I wanted to feature, so as I was thinking of this little project, I thought, self, I want to feature something from, from the celebration, not just, this, not just this berry blessings and this paper I showed you, but I wanted to feature the Oso Ombre paper. And by the way, Darting Donkeys and this, this Berry Blessings and Berry Delightful are the two most popular items. But the most popular paper of all of our papers is this paper here. It's called Oso oh Ombre Designer Series Paper. It's the most popular of our celebration papers. It's also free. And look at this fun paper. So we're going to take the, remember I talked about the coordinating colors. We're going to take the, the Granny Apple Green from this. We're going to cut the Granny Apple Green circles. The ovals, not circles, ovals. See? So we have Blackberry Bliss. There's only four colors in this paper. Blackberry Bliss, Rococo Rose, Bermuda Bay, and Granny Apple Green. Okay, so that's this paper here. The Oso Ombre. I've been cutting it out like crazy. I absolutely love this. So I think I should I think I went by it really quickly. But it's another free item you can get. Yeah, that Oso Ombre goes with everything. So this was the most popular stamp set. This one, and the, but the most popular paper is this. Oso Ombre paper. That's what we were told at our leaders group. So this is the paper you get for free when you spend $50. So now I thought, okay, so let's chop some of these out with the little punch. So what punch? This punch here is a pretty cool punch because it's a layering punch. And it's in our mini catalog. It's a layering punch. So it's called the, the double oval punch the double oval punch. And look at this really cute. I don't have this yet, oval occasions. I just have the punch. I just bought the punch, but I'm thinking I might need to get that closer to Easter time. But Easter time is right around the corner. I mean, it's really cute and it goes with this. You can get, when you save 10% when you get a bundle with a stamp set and punch. But the punch alone is 18, but it's a double punch. It's a pretty cool punch. So we're going to cut out just the, the little granny apple green part. And what I was thinking about this is I, I brought my I brought my markers to show you a little trick. My markers meaning my... This paper is not like our cardstock. When you use Stampin' Up! cardstock, it's dyed all the way through. It's dyed all the way through. So no matter if, if you ever punch cardstock, you're never going to get white inner core. There's no white inner core. But when you punch our designer series paper, you see you get that white... Can you see that? You get a white inner core. And it shows through. Now, if that annoys you, if you're a perfectionist, or not even, you don't even have to be a perfectionist for it to annoy you. You could just be a crafter and it annoys you. It annoys me when I get the white inner core. So you take your granny apple green. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to use the light one. The alcohol blends markers. But you could actually use, if you don't have alcohol blends markers, you can just use your regular marker, your Stampin' Rate marker. So what you do is you just kind of go around it with the brush side of the marker. So that gets rid of that. And I just do stuff like this while I'm watching TV. Not only that, it, not only does it get rid of the inner core, but it makes a really cute outline around your, around this little punch, this little scallop. And I'm just showing you what that looks like because even though I'm using the light one, look at that really cool outline it gives you. So I do this on my cards quite often. Gets rid of that white inner core. 
it frames your image more and it's just like something for people to go how did they do that and like you know oh how did they stamp around the edges well you didn't actually stamp around the edges of course you could use a sponge too but I think it works better with the brush tip of the marker than a sponge so when I put this on this for contrast, you're going to see what that looks like versus this one. Okay, so look at the difference. You know, you, with the little, how it frames it in there. Let me make sure I'm focused here with my camera. So I hope that makes sense. I don't know if my camera is focused, but makes sense to me. If it's focused with my bad eyesight. All right. So then what you're doing is that's only the outside anyway. That's not really the inside. Then we're going to take, the, we still need to get the stamp for the inside. That was just our little circles, our little ovals. I mean, so we need our bountiful blessings. We need to make the bountiful blessings. Well, I tried to stamp this on the ovals and I did not have success right on this paper. I mean, so I ended up using, so I'm using poppy prayed stamp, poppy prayed ink. I'm going to open up the poppy prayed ink and I'm now going to use this little, this little stamping block C. Because when you stamp right onto designer series paper, although it works, it just doesn't have really good ink absorption, right? Hi, Diane. Yes, it adds dimension. MJ, you're right. When I do that little drawing around the edge. So now I'm going to use the bountiful blessing stamp and don't worry that it gets stained. It just tends to stain when you use like poppy prayed. Um, I use rich razzleberry on these. I'll show you those projects at the end of this video. So you get, you, you know, it ends up, whenever you use the sort of red colors, they end up staining your stamps. So before you stamp onto whisper white cardstock, always stamp onto here, onto your mat, just to make sure. Okay. I'm, it's, it's a little blurry because I'm, I did it quick, but yeah, just to make sure you have good coverage. Okay. They have good coverage. Now I'm going to take my piece of, there's a little trick for you. Whenever you want to punch things, this is my trick. So make, make strips. This strip is about an inch and a half. Okay. Make strips so that when you, when you go in here, you can just cut the bottom part, the ovals without ax, without having to cut the top part, unless you want to cut the top part, but making strips saves you a lot of paper. If, if only you need, if all you need is the bottom part, all I need is this part to punch out. So make your strips and punch them before you do the second one. I've learned the hard way about this because I didn't, I didn't judge the distance. So I learned the hard way that you have to punch first. So I'm going to punch and then stamp again, because by punching and then stamping again, you actually, you make sure that they all are going to fit on here, right? That you're, that you have enough room because if you try to just put, stamp a bunch onto this paper, you're either wasting paper or you don't have enough paper. That's what happens to me. And I'm like, Oh darn, I did it again. You don't know how many times I've done that. I just didn't have enough room to get the next stamp. So bountiful blessings. Poppy prayed. Punched out with the double oval punch. I'm just making an extra one in case I mess up. And again, you can take the little, you can, oh, and you can also just, oh, by the way, if you just want to really save paper, you can do all the punching ahead of time, right? And then stamp it afterwards, which is fine too. But you might not know if you're going to use what you're going to use the shapes for. So that's just another option. Getting rid of the little scraps. You know what? While I'm here, I'm just going to put the bountiful blessings on these because my ovals are already punched, right? And I'm just going to, sometimes the stamp sticks to it and you just poke, you just poke it off like that. Yay. Bountiful blessings. Oh, that one got messed up a little, but that's okay. You just flip it over and stamp on the other side and then knock it off like that. Okay. So now we have that. I'm going to put that, I'm going to clo always close your ink because you'll get a big mess. So now we need to pop this up with dimensionals. So we need to pop these up onto these little granny apple greens. So up to you if you want to use big dimensionals or small dimensionals, probably two, probably use two big dimensionals. These are just little foam adhesives and you're putting them on like that. I told you it was going to be a simple card. Very simple. But we're going to jazz it up. Okay, we're going to... Okay. And then, of course, you just 
if you, you need more of the granny apple green for the back of those. Yeah, that's true, Lori. Lori's like says she punches things to, ahead of time. And Donna, Donna is a great tip. Yeah. So yeah, I punch them ahead of time. And then what you can use is you can use your stamparatus. And then what you do is you lay this piece into your, you lay this piece on your stamparatus. And then you just take all the pieces you punched ahead of time and you lay them into your stamparatus and lay it down. Stamp. Pull that one out. Put the other shape in there. Stamp. So you can have a little frame to put your little shapes in and use your stamparatus over and over. It's pretty cool. It's a good, good trick too. I do that too. Especially with die cutting. So now I'm going to use the... So that I've only popped up this part. I've only popped up this part on dimensional. See? Can you see that? That part. But I'm not doing this part. This part I'm using the adhesive for. Right? Because I don't need the whole thing to be popped up again. I'm going to put that there. So that card is cute already and we're going to make it even cuter. Did I do that one upside down? Yes, I did. See that? I did one of them upside down. That's why I'm glad I did a couple. I did an extra. I did this one upside down, like even though I did it on camera. So that's why I said that's good to have extras. All right. Well, that's okay. But you get the idea. So we're going to now we're going to decorate them. Because this one, all I have to do to fix it is this. I take this, I chop this off, just so you know my trick for fixing it when it's upside down. Don't try to remove your paper and flip it around because you, it'll never come out the same. Because my strawberries are upside down, what I'm going to do is chop this off, put it on a bigger card, and have this be an, a frame. So I'll put this on the memories and more cards. They're a little bit bigger card. Make a 5 by 7 card. That's all I'll do. Alright, so now I want to jazz it up. So I, I, found these, I found that these adhesive back sequins from the Artistry Bloom Suite in our annual catalog. They're called Adhesive Back Sequins. They have four coordinating colors. They have Calypso Coral, Rich Razzleberry, or this one, Mango Melody. We don't need that one. And Balmy, I think it was Balmy Blue. But anyway, I don't, or no, this was Coastal Cabana. So anyway, two of the colors didn't, didn't coordinate with this suite. But the Rich Razzleberry and the Calypso Coral are coordinating colors. So I took those ones and that's what I did here, I just add a few for some bling. So that jazzes up your card. So you take your little take your pick tool. That's this guy. Take your pick tool. And there's a putty side. You can use putty to help lift it. But I think this little hard side helps better. This little, the pokey side. And that way, wherever you have holes, like wherever you have big gaps. You see where there's big gaps? Because there's, my leaves didn't cover that section. That's where I'm going to put some big ones, or bigger ones. And then I'll put a smaller one right there. So always do, I, did, I always do my sequins in threes. You know, like one, one, two, three, just three, like that. Just kind of, maybe I'll move this one down a little bit. Nah, I think it's okay. Okay, so you just, you can do that. But then I thought of something else. So I thought of doing this. And I was, as I was jazzing them up, and I'm not sure, like sometimes I do different things based on how I'm going to mail it. Like if I'm going to mail it in the regular mail, Sometimes I don't put a lot of sequins in it. Okay, put that. Mm, maybe that one can go up there. Sometimes you don't want them all on the white part. But as long as there's three. I don't know why three. Just kind of a good number. Or if you're not going to do three, if you're going to do like six, just do like groups of three. So maybe three, six, nine. Okay, so then here's what I thought of. As I was, as I was looking out. Yeah, you got to add the bling, Donna. And so as I was looking at my cards as I was making them, and as I was looking at those little pieces of designer series paper, as I was adhering them, I thought of this. I thought, wow, look at these cute little plaids. Look at these cute little plaid patterns. I said, I bet they'd make good butterflies. Well, I haven't tried it yet. I'm trying it with you. This was just something that came up in my head that I thought that those would make good butterflies. The little butterflies, probably the little ones, to put around here instead of putting the bling, or in addition to putting the bling. So let's try putting some butterflies. Let's see if we can't punch through two pieces at once. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. This is the butterfly duet punch. It's in our annual catalog. I'm just going to punch a bunch of butterflies. Because then we can decide which ones we want. And the coordinating colors match already. And we have, then we'll have extra. Hey, hi. Who else came in there? Hi, Deborah. Yeah, odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. Thank you, Yvonne. That's the reason. So good. That, that's the story. We're sticking to it. They're more pleasing to the eye. So here we can put these little butterflies on here. I think these ones are going to look cute. Oops, they're double. 
And of course, they were just the ones. Yes, they're going to look cute. And let's see what the other side. And sometimes, sometimes on the other sides of these, right, there might be even other colors coming through. Like here, this one. Oh, they're going to be cute. And I might add some Wink of Stella to them. And I think it would be good to take these little guys or this paper and maybe make some butterflies out of this paper as well. Like any of the patterns, any of the, like the purpley patterns. So we're gonna try that and some sequins and maybe a little bit of Wink Castell on it. I just thought it would jazz it up. Now I've already lost my dimensionals. But it's good to, when you, when you put the little butterflies, use the small dimensionals, not the big ones. And then you can pop up your butterflies like this for more dimension, like that. You're gonna fold them up Oh, but when you when you mail them, of course they're going to crush back down. But you could still pop them up a little bit. Then we'll add a little wink of Stella to them. That's why I have the wink of Stella out. And of course, just like with anything, we need a few of those. So let's put let's put this butter let's put this butterfly that side because when I punched it, that got a little bit of purple. We'll put that in the top for some for some purple or for some not purple rich raspberry. See, so even though I punched it on the plaid side, some of them have that cute little part. So you have, even though it's butterflies, it doesn't matter if it's butterflies or it's sequins, it's good to have groups of threes. Because like Yvonne said, it's more pleasing on the eye. And then, I, you, of course, you could use pearls. I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm using my glitter brush, which is getting empty and I've shown how to refill this a little bit of alcohol and I've showed how to color these but I haven't been refilling them I've been just coloring them so when I'm done with them my empty Wink of Stella pens I've been putting some dye in them some extra reef ink reinkers and then I put some extra reinker in there with some alcohol and then I've been really stretching these out a lot oh I like that better and now we got to add some sequins Add, a, add some bling. So we'll put some bling there. This is the, like I said, these are the Calypso Coral bling, the Calypso Coral bling, and the Rich Razzleberry bling. From the Artistry Blooms Adhesive Back Sequins. Put one over there. So that is way better. So we have, we have good, better, best. Let's compare. We have good, we have a good card with nothing else on it. It's good. It's cute. People will like it. We have this is better. We have a little bit of bling on it, so it's better, right? Better. And now we have butterflies and bling, right? So that's best. The more embellishing, the better. <laughs> I mean, not best, but it's just, it's just better. Good, better, best. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do to mine. I think I'm going to sit here after this video is over and just, you know, pop up some butterflies and... Oh yeah, there's a video. I made a video on refilling the Wink of Stella. So what was really cool about that video is I, I put bumblebee ink in it. I made this bumble. I made them different colors. And as a result, check this out. I have them right here. I have some extras right here. Look what I did with it. Instead of, I was able to, I was able to color. I colored my Wink of Stella and I was able to color my daisies using colored Wink of Stella. So instead of like, Wink of Stella is clear, but when you put the stuff in it, when you put the dye in it, you get, I could color my daisies with that bumblebee color. And it just gives it a little tinge. I also did one in pool party to make some snow on Christmas time. So yes, it's on my channel. I'll have to link to it. I mean, you can find it. Just search for refilling Wink of Stella. You'll find, you'll find it on my channel. All right, so now I'm ready to show you the projects that I created as part of a little course I took. So one of the things that I do in, in, in or my team does, not just me, that my upline so her name's Hattie, and she had this, she hosted this event for us. Let me find it. She hosted a workshop for us. Okay. And we did this at our Christmas party. We had a workshop. And there were three parts to the class. Approaching perfection. I made these cards, which I'll show you another time, because this, this is all about that. And so Hattie, my upline, Honeybee Stampers, she made, she, she gave us a tutorial for these cards. Berry Blessing Card Class. Hattie Walker Nelson. So she gets credit for designing all the cards I'm about to show you, but I did make them. I made them myself, but with her designs. Okay, and I'm gonna show you them right now. So first of all, in the card class that she sent us, 
when I took this class, she gave me this little gift, gifty. Always, you always have a way of making my day. So isn't that fun? So it's just a really nice way to give somebody sticky notes. I don't have the measurements for it, but I mean, we can figure them out. And it just lays down flat. So that's just a really nice way of making the berry blessings. Something with the berry blessings, see? That's right here. You always have a way of making my day. So I'll lay that down. And then I made this card. And I made this card with... That's one of my team members had won this punch in one of my events or one of my challenges. But then I asked her, can I punch out a couple strawberries? Because I don't, I, didn't, I don't actually have the punch. I've already given it away. But I made that with the strawberry punch. The strawberry punch. I might as well show you that right now because we're the video is almost over. And I went pretty quick today. So I will show you the strawberry punch because it really coordinates well with this. And she said, sure, of course you can use it. It's yours. And I said, no, it's yours. You're the one that won it. So anyway, so I used it. I punched out some strawberries for these projects here, but then I sent it to her as a prize. I'm actually not that into berries, but I loved it for this, for this particular. Strawberry fields forever. It's page 44. So here's what it looks like. This is the strawberry punch. Just so, you, so the sweet strawberry uh, stamp set. And then you can get the strawberry bundle. With the, you save 10% when you get the strawberry punch with the stamp set. And that's part of our mini catalog. All that's linked in my description of this video. You can find this. Okay, so for this one I used a Pacific Point. So this is the difference between these blues. Look at the difference between using Pacific Point, which is just such a fun blue. I'm just getting adhesive off there. And look at this blue. This is the na Night of Navy blue. That's the one I used today. But look how fun this blue is. This Pacific Point. It's just a great blue to use. And I used piece strips there. And I just added to her design by adding this little flower, you know, to her design that was in her course. I like how she has this embossed, this little strip with the little embossing folder, the textures. And we used some seam binding ribbon and some adhesive back sequins. Let's see if I did anything. Oh, yeah, I did. I happened to add some stuff to this by adding. I took the dog builder punch and I punched out some little hearts. Hey, that's what we could do on here, too. In fact, that, that's kind of my thing, punching out things with little patterns of paper. We could have put hearts on this card as well. All right. The second card that I made was using the two-step stamping. Bye, bye, Sheila. Got to go. Okay. So the two-step stamping, I used, I stamped the leaves over here. But over here, I stamped once the outline, this part. Once I stamped the outline, and then inside it, I stamped. So this, this is a really cool set because it has distinctive stamping where you can see the colors come out with the little, there's different concentrations of colors. And that's called two-step stamping. And let's see the inside of this card. This is a Granny Apple Green card base, and I just put some flowers on the inside. So another good celebration card. And then this one I did a lot more work on because I didn't use my scan and cut to cut out these leaves. Instead, I used scissors. I actually used scissors. I fuzzy cut the leaves because I was only just cutting out the one set of leaves. So I stamped this and then that, and then I cut them out, and I put Wink Estella on those, and that's how I got the berries. You always have a way of making my day, and there's plain inside. And this is, I think, the hippo. I'm pretty sure that's the hippo and friends dies. This shape here for the card is hippo and friends. And lastly, I did take her card, and I did something a little different to it. Her card looked like this. It said thank you because she was using the sweet strawberry set, but I didn't have that, so I instead did a hello card. And I just did a little bit different with the seam binding ribbon, but I like how she put vellum here. Oh, yeah, thanks for watching the replay, Janet. See how she put vellum, stitched vellum on there? So I really like that. And then I added some extra little flowers there. So those are five, six, six ideas. So if you do like this and you do get this berry blessings, then you have all these ideas of things that you can make with it, right? You have, you have this thing you can make with it. This is the shaded spruce card. This is a rich razzleberry card. This is a granny apple green card. This is a berry blessing card. How long did it take you to make each card? Oh, well, this one I just sat and watched. I just made all these today, like t today, um, watching TV, all these cards here. But of course I had the other parts done before. I should say I just made them all, but I had, I did have the little pieces done. I had, all I did was put them together today. So yeah, you can do them all, like you could make 
a big stack of cards like this in one day if they're all the same. Now these would take you, you know, 20 minutes each because they're not all the same and you have to emboss and do it. So the, the, the quicker you make cards is based on how many are the same. Okay, so the, if they're the same, you can make more. And where was that little thing? So anyway, there was, that was for the cards. These were the card idea. The one we just made, two, three, four, five. Oh, and the sticky note idea. So there you have all those ideas of what you can do. Here it is, the sticky note idea in case you just, you know, with, with this set, with this very blessings and very delightful. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you'll shop with me and earn free items during celebration because it's just so much fun. And bling up your cards. I hope this gave you inspiration on what to do with cards, with any designer series paper really that you have. Doesn't matter. You can use the same design, the same measurements, and just kind of do that same, same type of thing. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. This is the Paper Chef.